Light Yagami is one of the top students in Japan. He aspires to be a great detective one day like his father, and is a gifted intellect destined for greatness. But lately, he's been feeling like there is a urgent need for justice, as he is very frustrated with all the crime going on, and feels like the world is rotting. Meanwhile, in the Shinigami realm, a god of death called Ryuk stole another god of death's notebook, and dropped it into the human realm, because he thinks it would be entertaining to see what a human would do with it. For what seemed a normal day in class, Light observes a notebook that falls from the sky. Guy. There is no logical explanation for this, so as anyone probably would, he goes to pick it up and check it out. When he's reading its contents, the notebook says that it has the power to kill anyone just by simply writing their name and thinking of their face. If the cause of death is written within the next 40 seconds of writing the person's name, it will happen. However, if the cause of death is not specified, the person will simply die of a heart attack. Light is in disbelief of it and thinks it's some kind of prank, but holds on to it anyway as he is curious. When he gets home, he reads the rest of the rules, and after some time of thinking about it, he decides to try out the notebook. However, just when he harnesses the pen, he thinks if doing this would make him a murderer, but bets it won't work anyway, so he checks the news and finds a criminal holding eight people hostage at a daycare center. After seeing the criminal's name and face, he writes his name in the death note. He waits 40 seconds and nothing was reported yet, so he thinks it didn't work. However, just when he was about to turn off the television, something happens, and the hostages start coming out of the daycare. The reporter confirms that the suspect has been found dead inside, which leaves Light utterly shocked. He says it must be a coincidence, and the following day, decides he will have to test it out again to see results in real time. He looks around his class, and sees a degenerate he doesn't like, but decides it would be smarter to avoid killing people he knows. After school, Light was on the way home when he sees a woman getting mugged by a group of guys. He writes the ringleader's name down and the cause of death, and surely enough, it happens. After seeing the death note's power in real time, that settles it for Light, and he realizes the notebook of death is for real. Some time passes, and Light is in his room looking proudly at all the names he has written down, when suddenly, our favorite Shinigami Ryuk appears. The sight of him petrifies Light at first, however he introduces himself, and says that used to be my notebook, and judging by your laughter, you must have figured out that it's no ordinary notebook. Light calms down, and says well I'm not surprised, in fact, I have been waiting for you. Rook finds Light to be interesting, and explains that several death notes have made their way into the human realm, but he's the only one to have written this many names. Light feels like someone has to be brave enough to wipe out the dregs of society, so that the world can move in the right direction. A new world where people can live in peace, and the ones who do wrong will live in fear. He feels like he is justice, and is willing to go as far as sacrificing his soul to become the god of the new world. Several weeks later, all the nations of the world come together as they've realized that the deaths of all the criminals are not natural. They are at each other's throats because they can't figure out how this is happening. So it is announced that they will have to bring the world's best investigator on the case, called L. Everyone goes quiet, and a man dressed incognito brings in a laptop, to which L addresses the meeting from. He introduces himself for the first time, and says to make no mistake, what we're witnessing is an atrocious act of mass murder, one that is unforgivable, and he will need full cooperation from the ICPO and the Japanese police, which confuses the chief of police, however. L reveals that there is a strong possibility that the culprit is in Japan, and that he will be able to prove it after he directly confronts him. Meanwhile, Light comes up with a genius plan to hide the notebook. He puts a regular diary in the drawer, which he believes will satisfy anyone's curiosity who looks inside, but made a special key that you insert under the drawer to lift up the fake bottom, where the death note is hidden. Also if anyone were to try and force open the fake bottom, the whole thing would set on fire. Ryuk is amazed to see how well Light thought things through, and thinks the fire is risky. However, Light says he would rather a little house fire than to be executed. Some time goes by, and the whole world seems to be talking about all the mysterious deaths happening. On the internet, lots of people have sided with this unknown person killing criminals. They seem to have chosen the name Kida, which derives from the English word killer. Light is not too fond of the name he's been given, but is happy to see that people are supporting him. While Light is watching TV, the channel suddenly changes, where a reporter states that this is a live worldwide broadcast from Interpol. We then see a man with the name, Lindell Taylor, who says he is L. He goes on to say how atrocious these crimes are, and says he will not rest until Kida is brought to justice. Light seems to be calm and overconfident he won't be caught, however. The man on TV goes on to say what you're doing is evil, making 
Moonlight angry, as he believes anyone who would oppose his views are the truly evil ones. So without hesitation, he writes Lindell Taylor in the notebook, and patiently waits with a smug look on his face, saying that this is the longest 40 seconds of my life. After 40 seconds, the man on the TV dies of a heart attack, and Light begins mocking him. But just a few moments later, L pops up on the screen, startling Light. He is shocked that his plan actually worked, and says that he wouldn't have believed it if he hadn't just witnessed it. That someone can kill without being there in person. L says, listen to me Kida, the man you just killed on television was an inmate whose execution was scheduled for today. That was not me, and provokes Light, saying kill me. However, Light can't, because he doesn't know his face, so L deducts right there that he must need a face as well as a name to kill. L also reveals that although this was announced as a worldwide broadcast, they're only broadcasting in the Kanto region of Japan. So now he knows where he is. Ryuk is impressed by L, who goes on to say that he didn't expect things to go this well, and it won't be long until he can sentence Kita to death. When the broadcast ends, Light becomes infuriated that he'd been completely outsmarted and fell right into L's trap. He says he will accept his challenge, and they both then say at the same time, I will hunt you down wherever you're hiding, and I will eliminate you, I am justice. And that is how the greatest battle of intellect began. When continuing to investigate, L notices that criminals are dying at certain times. To be exact, it coincides with the free hours of a student. He shares this with the Japanese police, and also deduces that the culprit has a very childish concept of right and wrong. So the likelihood that they're dealing with a student is even higher. Some time goes by, and the timings of the killings have changed. L realizes this of course, however, he believes that it's no coincidence that as soon as he shared his deduction with the Japanese police, the times changed, as if it were to contradict that theory. So now, L believes there is a high chance that Kita is someone with connections to the Japanese police. Many detectives decide to quit the case, as they're afraid of Kita. Meanwhile, Light is walking home and Ryuk informs him that he has to stick around until the death note is finished, or at least until he dies, and lets him know that he isn't on his side, or L's side, and that he is merely a spectator. Ryuk then informs Light that someone is following him, which comes as a surprise as he didn't expect L to suspect the police so quickly. Light realizes this guy will be a problem for him, so he comes up with a plan to get rid of him. However, before he can start to think, Ryuk becomes talkative again, and informs Light that a Shinigami can see a person's name and lifespan above their head, because they have special eyes. He is telling him this because a human can obtain these eyes, but it would cost half your remaining lifespan. Light thinks about it, but turns down Ryuk's ideal, saying, it's out of the question. Some time passes, and Light carries out his plan to get the name of the man following him. He gets on a bus with a girl, and the man sits just behind him. At the next stop, a man with a gun gets on to do a bus jacking. Light passes a note to the girl saying he will reach for his gun. However, that was just a hoax to get the man behind him to engage him. The man reveals that he is an FBI agent, so if it comes to it, he will stop the bus jacker. Light tells him to prove he isn't an accomplice, and show some ID. The man is sure he isn't Kida, as Kida would have just killed the bus jacker. So he shows Light his identification, where we see his name is Ray Pember. Light tricks the bus jacker into touching a piece of the death note, so he freaks out when he sees Ryuk, and rushes off the bus, where he is hit by a car and dies. After the incident, Ray goes home, where we see his fiancée, called Naomi, who used to be a great detective that had worked under L before. She tells Ray that the whole bus jacking was suspicious and a little coincidental, but Ray tells her to leave it alone, as she agreed to leave that life behind when they got engaged. Meanwhile, Light decides to wait one week before making a move on Ray, as it would draw too much attention to him to make a move now. When the time comes, Light goes to the train station to wait for Ray. When he spots him, he approaches him from behind, saying turn around and you are dead. He proves he is Kita by killing a man close by, who turned out to be a criminal to women that got away multiple times because of lack of evidence. Kita informs him that if he doesn't comply, he will kill his wife and family. Ray is stunned that he knows about Naomi, and Kita continues to say, I see you've got your laptop. I want the files containing the identities of all the FBI agents who came to Japan. Light instructs Ray to write down all the names of the agents on a piece of paper he gave to him, and then ride the train for 30 minutes to avoid any suspicion, leaving the file on the train when he gets off. However, when he exits the train, he has a heart attack, and turns around to see Kita standing there, and says Light with his last breath. We come to discover that the piece of paper Light gave him was a ripped page from the death note. So when Ray Pember was writing down the agent's names, he was literally signing their death warrant. 
At dinner, Light's father, Chief Detective Soichiro Yagami, reveals that he is head of the Kida investigation, and shares that 12 FBI agents died yesterday. Light of course knows because he did it, but acts innocent to the matter, and Light's sister begs her dad to quit as it's too dangerous. However, Soichiro says he will not let evil triumph, and while Light is soaking in the conversation, he stands up and says he's proud to have him as his father, and if anything should happen, he will find Kida himself and execute him. Meanwhile, L has whittled down the task force to a trust group, who have a strong sense of justice, so he sets up a meet to show his face for the first time ever, in order to prove he is willing to do whatever it takes to catch Kida. When the task force arrive at the hotel, they find the room L told them he's staying at, and when they open the door, they are surprised to see L is just a kid. The detectives introduce themselves, Matsuda, Aizoa, Mogi, and Ukida. They are suspicious that this might not be the real L, but after talking for some time, they are sure he is the real deal. L knows that Kida can control his victims before they die, as he'd been sending messages using the inmates in prison, so he concludes that Kida must have been someone the FBI was investigating between a certain period of time. In fact, he has no doubt. He admits that losing 12 FBI agent lost him the battle, but he will not lose the war, and that justice will prevail, which empowers the task force. L tells them from now on to call him Ryusaki, and gives each of them an individual interview before they leave. Meanwhile, Ray Pember's fiance, Naomi, has started investigating the bus jacking, and figured out some vital information. She goes to the task force headquarters to report it, and says she needs to speak with someone right away, however she is informed that no one is there. A few moments later, Light arrives as he came to bring his father a change of clothes. He overheard Naomi at the reception, and offers to help her contact someone from the task force. Light walks with Naomi, and says when his father's phone turns back on she can call him. In the meantime, he figures out what she knows about the Kita case. She reveals that Kita must be able to kill in a number of ways, and not just a heart attack. Light panics, as this information could lead to his arrest and execution. He writes her name down on a ripped piece of the notebook. However, nothing happens. Rook laughs, and he realizes that the name she gave him earlier was an alias, and he must find her name out before she leaves. He uses his master manipulation tactics to gain her trust, saying that he is secretly a member of the task force, and he can recommend her to join since she'd worked under L before. After getting her identification and writing her name down, he tells Naomi that he is Kida. Just before the 40 seconds is up, and we see a heart-wrenching look in her eyes, as she never would have thought Light could actually be Kida. Naomi then walks to her death, and that was honestly one of the most twisted scenes I've seen in anime. When L hears about Naomi's suicide, he remembers working with her, and that she was a strong and excellent FBI agent, so it is unlikely she would commit suicide, and more likely she'd be trying to catch Kida. He concludes that Kida must be someone Ray Pember was investigating, and sets up surveillance all over Chief Yagami's household. Meanwhile, Light had set up a system so that he would know if anyone goes in his room. So when he arrives home, he notices that his door had been opened. He tasks Rook to find all the cameras in exchange for some juicy apples, and in the meantime he looks at some magazines to make himself look like a normal teenager. Rook found all the cameras, so now Light can set up a system to where he can kill criminals without being seen, by putting a mini TV in his potato chip bag, and writing names of the criminals broadcasted from it. He will take a potato chip, and eat it. After some time, L suspects that Light looks too innocent, which understandably aggravates the chief, as his own son is being suspected of being a ruthless mass murderer. The next day, Light's school is taking an important exam. Everything seemed like a normal day, until the teacher yells at a student to sit properly. Light turns his head, and sees L for the first time. They look at each other intensely, and after the exam, the board announced the top exam students, which turn out to be none other than Light and Ryusaki. The kids watching notice the contrast in the two, that Light looks like a sheltered genius groomed for success, and L looks like what they would call a mad genius. After the award, L tells Light that he basically knows everything about him, and that he has some important information regarding the Kita case. Light doesn't know why this guy is even talking to him. However, Ryusaki drops the bombshell, and says I am L, to see how he will react. Light is freaking out in his mind, but tries to keep it together and says he has nothing but respect and admiration for him. L is just under 5% sure Light is Kida, and has a strong feeling he is not wrong to suspect him. When Light gets home, he rages and says damn it, he got me, I've never been so humiliated. Ryuk is surprised to see Light so angry, because he is usually so calm. Light knows if he manages to kill L now, it will make it obvious that he's Kida. He realizes that he underestimated L, and declares that the fight is on, making an evil laugh. He realizes that they have no hard proof on him, so it will be a contest between him and L. 
a battle of wits. On the surface they'll be classmates, but in reality they'll actually be investigating each other. Light announces that in time, he will earn his trust, and once he's told him what he wants to know, he'll kill him. Comment if you would like a part 2. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on another video. See you in the next one, take care.